You bashed for it and I brought it back. Well, I didn't really bring it back. Uh, Spring World 1934 tutorial. Yes, I decided to stick with the background music. The ones that's not annoying like the others video. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that, guys. Thought it was going to help, but it did not. So we're here again doing this live again. And this time, I'm also going to address some of the comments in the video. So let's jump into this. Oh, fuck. I'm ready to waste an hour. I'm ready to waste an hour, guys. All right, let's do this. Up here, we have the country's name, UK. Up here is the amount of money we have in our treasury. Right here we can see the regional atlas and it just gives us a lot of good information about the game. And the best part about the game I like so far is that it shows the dead regions. So like if so Armenia was annexed by the Soviets, you still see the Armenian information. So, does that show up anywhere now? So, say like you kicked Armenia's ass and you wanted to like look back at all the countries you fought and conquered, they would still have all the stats up here. So that's pretty neat. I like that. But uh, it just gives you information like domestic, military, uh, foreign affairs I think voting and then your score so that's what the original atlas is here we have it just shows how much money we make in a day and then it shows us annual well it should show us annual apparently UK makes the same amount in a day as they do in a year and then here we have game menu it just lets you do things. Right here we have the date, May 1st, 1940. And here if we um okay, let's let's <laughs> let's address this really quick. Right over here on the side of the clock, you could press it in and out over there and it'll be your objectives. And here you could see your objectives by clicking here. And uh, that's to close it but uh... objectives if you're in a campaign will be like stop hitler and if you click on here view objective details it will tell you what to do so we need to force germany to surrender and it will give you like a little description and you could like set on current objective so that's what we got well that's what we would have to do if we were playing the game right now which I'm just showing a tutorial and then that's another thing is if you like keep it paused and then you do like a thingy like that it will automatically start the game or keep the clock going I don't know why it's a stupid thing but over here we have the time if you press this little thingy pause it'll play that's pretty self explanatory here we have times we can go from very slow to fastest Usually you want to do normal or very slow in combat or go into war and then do fastest when you're just skimming around. Alright. Over here we have the uh, alert messages. We have foreign, espionage, defense, research, economic, uh, world affairs, and then current news or whatever the hell you want it to be so then let's we'll, we'll get into that later but uh guide down here on the user screen if you click here they'll also give you little updates on the military and economic things like breaking news reports Germany has captured a base which you can like hold on let's open it up Oh, never mind. It doesn't doesn't do what I wanted it to do. But if you have it like this, and there I go again. If you like cl exit out of like a thingy like that, like see, and then you just exit out. Or is it if you? 
Like I said, I'm not the best at this. So if, just be warned if you like to play on um, paused a lot and you go through the menu, it will uh, automatically make the game start again or go again. So here we have the base has skip being captured. It gives you the date, the country is affected, and a little description. Here we can have it no longer receive this topic, so we will never receive another update theme like that. I just pointed with my finger like this. So no more red dots saying the base has been captured. Pause on event, so every time a base is captured, it will pause. And then do not auto delete this message, which... You got me. Guess it doesn't auto delete. We can acknowledge. Here we could delete the message, open full message, or center on message. So we'll just press that and... Uh, nine point. But uh... Alright, let's jump into the map right here. You could like, minimize it and maximize it by doing that. And then, down here we have max zoom out, max zoom in. Holy shit, that's it's detailed. It looks like a carpet. And then we have like click this this can easily be done with the mouse, just saying. Oh and then if you if you click on the flag up in the corner, it will center it on the country. I forgot to mention that. I figured that was an important thing. And then here we have the mid level zoom. So this is basic zoom level and then you could just move around the map by clicking let's go back and then up here we have our measuring tool which I like to use personally for artillery lets me know where to set the artillery up and yeah it also helps like I guess if you're tech savvy it lets you figure out how soon your units will arrive to the place but uh that's what that does it also gives you information like that how many hexes they gotta go the basic hex I think it tells you in the menu a hex, like a simple hex is 16 kilometers so this single hex is 16 kilometers and I'm pretty sure if you put it on grid overlay you can get the hexes like that which I don't know why you would want that it's pretty simple as it is but you got the measuring tool you can view your empire which we have large parts of Africa well not large parts just Africa in general not the entire continent just parts of it so that's view your empire I guess if you wanna if you're narcissistic and you like looking at your mass, your mass empire, or just, I don't know, don't, just, I don't know, just do what I, do with it as you please. Commodity and population filters. So, if you wanted to find agriculture, you could simply press that. Rubber, which there's probably n no rubber. Like, I don't know if they didn't put it in the game yet or. But for the life of me, I can't find rubber anywhere in the map. Your timber, your petroleum, your coal, metal ore, uranium, electricity, and then your population. And how do we get out of this? Just no, I won't. I don't. I don't okay, there we go. We're gonna click. Oh, oh no, 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 no! Exit. There we go. But that can be done. And if you right-click. You could go into here and then get your buildings, your urban, military, and industrial. Urban and industrial are pretty much the same. So for industrial, if we wanted to build agriculture, it will simply show us agriculture instead of making us go in here. Fuck. <laughs> so making us go in here and doing that. And then if battle zone control. So let me find the battle zones down here. Battle zones are like smaller 
Oh, excuse me, I burped. Battle zones are smaller. Uh, hold on, we'll just be easier saying this, doing this. So we have theaters, which are theaters of war. Pretty sure everyone knows that. And so we have like the Eastern, Eastern Europe over here, Western Europe, Russia, and like. So this will be like the m large scale conflict at hand. So we could be theater control for Britain. It'll also tell you the theater zone, its name. So Northern Europe is up here. Now we could set military priority. This is, I think it's about how many units will probably be deployed and sent to that area. So if we put it to high, a lot of units will be shipped over. Military focus, we could be offensive or defensive. Just gonna put that back to there. Diplomatic focus, we can be aggressive. We can have none. Espionage, we could go aggressive again or none. And then even in here you could uh, select battle zone coverage thingy. Now as for the uh, battle zone, it's smaller theater it's just think of it as a smaller theater of war. And then you can do the same thing as theater of war. Just on a smaller scale. So that covers that. Now we can have weather, the weather overlay, which will let you know if it's raining or something, something like that. Water locations, grid overlay, theater, battle zone, supplies. I recommend if if you're new to the game playing with supplies because or the supply map overlay on because. I remember I had the trouble, like invading other countries and then pushing in, you will most likely run out of supplies. So you want to be able to advance and let the supplies catch up to your front and then advance again. So it's good to play with that on and then sight is if you don't like playing with fog of war. Fog of war is still there, it's just not shown. And then you have ownership, loyalty, I don't think you can change loyalty, I think it stays like that forever, garrisons, your height, urban and low visibility, and defensive terrain. So all that pretty much helps you out with playing the game, giving you strategic advantages and stuff like that. So over here we have our land and I want to just showcase a question I got asked so here we have land if we click around it it'll tell us the population, the supplies its grid coordinates or its name and then uh... it also tells you the theater for it's in and it tells you like high ground dry normal see if I can oh that's probably that's for weather I'm a dumbass <laughs> down here it tells you what type of terrain it is so we have wo light forests narrow rivers plains light forest there'll be like heavy forests tundras yeah I'm a dumbass <laughs> Here we have the weather, it'll tell us if it's over, what type of uh, weather it's going to be, and then if the ground's dry or muddy. It tells us the supplies, it tells us how many garrisons are there, and then we could like, organize defense garrisons, or just pre request two, they'll just give us information about it, and clear garrisons. And if we have unit presence, like, like over here, I think, it'll tell us what type of unit is in the hex with us. So that's pretty interesting. And then someone asked that when they were finished building a certain type of building, 
it had the thunderbolt symbol. All you want to do is go into land, and that usually means it's low on you're on low on uh, reserves. So you just want to hop in land, go to the building that is uh, has a thunderbolt on it, and then you just want to left click on it and click on the activate button. And then you could also like build new facilities or repair when damaged. I think that covers the land estate. It's all diplomatic from there. It's all diplomats. Or diplomatic affairs, I should say. It just gives you information about other countries, so... Here we can see how many colonies they have, how many enemy regions they have, allied regions, their uh, treaty integrity, in tr integrity, their uh, domestic approval rate, their military approval rate, their standings with us, our relationship with them, their type of government, their population, how much money they have, their portrait, and then we have our minister. We could tell him how much money to throw at insurgents to help revolutions get started. We could tell him how much government, how much money to spend for government support, how much money to send, spend for uh, espionage, and here we could have him do certain things and right here we could have them do like trade relations or acquire technologies or intelligence pretty much the same as here so some to do military alliances because why not then we can negotiate the region so here we have the things we can have like treaty or treaties so we could have like a non-aggression pact and over here we have resources so this is how much so if you're confused this is if you want to give them supplies you just hop over here and add the offer and then if we want it let's say we want their rubber we make it thingy and then we do maximum offer that's how that works and then we can move over here to technology so we could trade technologies with each other we have unit and missile design so if we wanted let's see do they have they don't have the legion so let's say we want french marines and we were willing to give them do we have the royal marines or we wanted to give them our marines we could like work at a trade like that so this is if you want to get their units or give them your units you could also do that for pretty much anything else. Then here, you can never, like, mm, how to say that? It says unknown because really you can't really quest their units. They can only offer you them at times of, at certain times. So the only thing we can do is offer them units. But yeah, that's pretty much all of that and here we could just it tells you the existing trees we have already and up here we could have ex auto accept future balanced or better commodity and money offers so basically if they offer us a good deal we'll automatically accept it click here to ignore economic offers from this region so if they want to trade us supplies or something like that we could tell them to click on this and have it be ignored and then if we, they offer us military units we could ignore it as well and offer expiration date which I'm pretty sure usually only matters in multiplayer because normally the AI responds pretty quickly and then we have influence relation yeah, influence relations. Pretty much the same thing we saw. We could break all treaties. We could support the ruling party. Or we could support the opposition. We could have units path around. Or units declare war on incursions. So that means if they sent a unit across the channel. And sent it into London. We could automatically declare war on them. We could fund insurgency. Provide modern equipment. Or we could just have high funding 
then we have our severe action so if we really wanted to we could declare war on France we could condemn wars by this region or we could support them same way foreign troop placements and here we have espionage so we can deploy spies by clicking on this button up here we have recon which just deploys a unit and gets the fog of war taken away in a certain radius we have espionage which you want to deploy to research facilities and land fabrications to try and steal tech and then we have sabotage which just they just blow shit up <laughs> So espionage is done. Diplomatic relations is just like I said, tells you about all that stuff. And then facility controls is just stuff. Financing is pretty can be hard and it can be easy. I'm just gonna say that. Let's see, um here we have infrastructure, so if you wanted to build roads and shit like that, you could do that. You can see we could like build a highway all the way out there if we really wanted to. So that's transportation and then here we have social spending and taxation. So taxation is what you do to get money. So if we really wanted to we could have 100% taxes for everything. Or you could just click on the individual things and adjust them accordingly. And then we have a social spending, which is just what type of things you want to spend your money on. And according to each one, has a specific specific advantages and disadvantages. So here we have social assistance, which I think it helps with diplomatic relations. Cultural helps with uh, keeping terrorism down or something like that. Basically these two are, these two in environment, you can just kind of spend low amounts of money on it. Law enforcement decreases insurgency and espionage, so if we have that all the way up, we can really just crack down on their spies. Family subsidy is the more money you get, the more children, or the more people you're likely to get environment just it just raises diplomatic not diplomatic uh, domestic approval infrastructure you want to keep that high almost all the time because that's what keeps the supplies moving and where is the supplies and without high infrastructure your supplies will start to diminish in size it just helps with the supplies just saying it's good to keep that up. Same with education and healthcare. Education just keeps literacy up, and then healthcare just keeps your population healthy. So, out of the all these, I would recommend law enforcement, family subsidy, infrastructure, and healthcare. That's the majority. Or if you're really low on funds, you could just focus on infrastructure and then healthcare. This tells you your trades, your expenses, your income, and if you're new to the game, you want to come in here and you want to control your uh, economy and not have anyone, not, not have the AI guy fuck with it, just come under here, under cabinet, and come down here to locks, and lock minister from social spending, and lock minister from taxation. So he will not have, so if you do that, he will not be able to adjust any of the tax taxes or social spendings and if you really want you can lock him from making bonds here we have resources so if it's if the blue if the production is higher than the actual use you're doing good but if actual use is higher than production then you kinda have to focus on doing that it also tells you information like production costs and market price so basically you want to try and just keep everything above actual use and then 
you just do things in here like yeah things <laughs> I'm not good with this I just I just take a look at production and if it's lower I just build stuff to do that to get it higher then we have research and if you're new like most people you want to come down here to cabinet and do the same thing as the economy you want to lock the minister from research spending lock him from unit research and lock him from tech research so this will mean that you will be able to come in here and think we only have three re yeah we have three research slots so that's you come in here pick your techs you want to get get your three techs you want to get or units or whatever and it will mean that he won't be able to pick anything for you he'll just be able to make recommendations so if you want to have control over your research come down here and lock everything and then you can come up here to research efficiency and you could try you can mess around with it the higher the research efficiency the better research the faster the research is here we have defense production and once again if you're new and you want to have total control well that's the next one here if you want to have total control still you can come down here to cabinet and select the initiative and put it all to none low initiative just means they go around and do stuff medium means they conduct reconnaissance high means they'll go out and attack and full means the military will be pretty much self-reliance and we can come over here and lock the minister from military spending or lock him from garrison control garrison control is in here we could you could tell how many garrisons to put in the cap and the cities and when the enemy comes and is within range the garrisons will pop up and defend the city so that's what the garrisons are used for here we can select the infantry and stuff like that to build then over here we can fabrication often options so if you want the AI to do all, your, all the building for you you can click on here to land auto build is active so you want the thing uh, the thunderbolt gold if you want the AI to do it for you and then you can select if you want offensive or defensive quality over quantity and platform type searches for the missiles then we have our alert conditions and yep that stuff and we have battle zone settings then we could do things like that theater settings and then we have facility things and what is this facility construction begins oh and then we hop over here to defense we can come over here and where is it this let me just show it off here is our unit orders so we can have a move patrol means so if we have them go to like yeah the B down yeah B down airfield he'll patrol from here to there and he'll keep going back and forth until the enemies are encountered Oops. load into means he'll load into like a plane or a ship attacking it means he'll attack attack facility means he'll attack facility like the aircraft production escort he'll escort a unit air transport or sea transport means he'll request transportation load unit means that's usually for cargo planes cargo ships and cargo contain car the cargo uh, not cargo what are they called transport trucks yeah those repair means he'll go to the closest barracks and repair reserve means he'll go back into the reserves and trench means he'll uh, dig in to the place he's at split unit he'll split scrap unit he'll get that'll get rid of the unit altogether and it'll tell you some information like how many personnel are in it and distance 
and then we could set it to a battle group we could cancel orders so let's cancel the orders then we have our row rules of engagement so we could select speed route their initiative contact options so if you want you could have them pursue down the enemy Launch tolerance they can have no loss no losses or they could have high loss tolerance minister control if you want to control the military on your own I recommend locking the minister from even touching the ground forces or the uh, armed forces opportunity fire the enemy will attack the units without being told approach you will capture land missile acceptance they will accept auto deployed missiles and they accept changes so if you adjust someone's individual rules of engagement you don't want it to get fucked up you just put this on so we could apply that to all new units or apply it to all here we have our available missiles and then that Woo! might have done that in a better time might have so that's the tutorial I don't think I missed anything important pretty sure I didn't Ah, oh, if this recording fucked up I'm gonna cut a bitch so that is Supreme Lord 1934 tutorial new and improved hope you guys liked it I had fun well fun is an understatement but I had fun making this for you guys again would I do it again no so that's why I say I hope this same fuck up so I hope this tutorial helped you out any questions ask them below and Vibra Rebel signing off